Hello, binge watchers. Ever since I was a little kid, I've been obsessed with woodlouse. I remember going to my grandmother's house and sitting on her porch. Right next to the porch was a large uh, collection of bushes and rocks, and the area was always moist. And I would sit on the stairs at the stoop, lift up the rocks, and there would just be roly polies everywhere. And, uh, you know, that fascination has uh, stuck with me. So I decided to try to make a little habitat for some early police. Um, it rained this morning and it's going to rain more today. Um, so this is the perfect time to go roly poly hunting. So uh, there's a wood pile over here and I'm going to pull back the wood and let's see what we can uh, see. <laughs> Well, we've got some earthworms and there's some kind of white grub. The camera probably can't pick it up, but there are ants everywhere too. Um, there's a little slug and there's a snail. Not seeing any really pulleys yet. My goodness, what's a boy to do? Full disclosure, I kind of cheated and already actually made the habitat. <laughs> but um, I still want to show the process. Oh, there's another slug right there. Nice little, come on, focus now. Nice little shiny leopard slug. There's another roly poly. So, what you need for this, uh, you need a large jar. Um, I happen to have a big pickle jar. I cleaned it out yesterday, let it dry. And for the lid, you're going to want to poke a bunch of holes in it with a knife. Don't do that. D don't do that. No. Um, put a cloth on the top, like some cheesecloth or something. Seal it with the rubber band and poke holes uh, through the top. Um, I found out that if you just do the lid, it retains too much moisture, um, and so there ended up being mold growing on the pine needles. And then you're going to want to uh, put some uh, potting soil in the bottom of the jar, gather up some leaves and some you know pine needles and you know bits of wood, um, and then just put your roly polies in there and close the lid. They'll have plenty of air, and you don't want to water them. They get most of their uh, water from the nutrients they eat. Um, what what you'll want to do is either like you know throw in some like wet lettuce leaves. Uh, the, decompos the, the decomposition process will help with the moisture. Um, you'll also want to get a little uh, spray bottle and uh, periodically you know spray inside. Uh, just a light, just a light misting. Uh, just to give them enough uh, moisture. But anyway, let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the habitat I built. So here's the jar in question. Like I said, just a little dusting of potting soil on the bottom. Oh, and I sh I don't know if I said this already, but make sure that um, the soil does not have any pesticides in it. Just regular old potting soil. And I say potting soil because I read online that you want to be careful with grabbing dirt from the ground because uh, there may be baby predators, uh, like, you know, little little bugs. Uh, in fact, that might be, I don't know if that's just like some kind of little gnat or what, but anyway, you got to be careful with that because you don't want the predators to grow up and then eat your little, your little isopods, your little wood lice. But um, I have three in here right now, uh, two about this size, one slightly smaller. Let's uh, open up the jar. Um, well, tell you what, I'm not seeing the others. <laughs> I just put them in here though, and uh, apparently you don't really have to worry about aggression unless you let them mate. 
The males um, apparently like to eat the young, and I, uh, I'm not really sure how you're supposed to differentiate between male and female, although I think I read that the uh, males are, are the larger ones, so who knows, who knows about that. Where did the others go? They must be, uh, they must be buried in, in the dirt. Let me, let me shake this up a bit. I don't want to disturb them too much, but... Anyway, uh, this would be a great backyard experiment for kids. Get them a jar and have them, have them hunt down their wood louse and take care of them. Um, I read online that they live anywhere from two to three years. I have no idea how old these woodlouse are. They may be, you know, fully grown. They may be close to the end, end of their life cycle. Who knows? But... <clears throat> ah found another one hiding and then there's that big one we were following around so two of the three focus focus there we go one two three one of them has some um, kind of whitish markings on his carapace, or shell, or whatever you call that. I love pill bugs. They're awesome. So there you have it. I have uh, three in here. And uh, let's go ahead and put the leaves back in. And we'll uh, put the lid on. And uh, there you go. I'm not going to uh, spritz it today with water because, like I said, it just rained and there's plenty of moisture on the leaves and everything. But yeah, just get yourself a, a tiny little spritzer bottle. And um, there you have it. I love nature. Nature's awesome. Bugs are cool. Um, but anyway, so that's all I have for today's episode of being in the backyard with Ben digging up pill bugs. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye. That's awful. <laughs> that is a terrible joke. <laughs>